Before I get started, I just want to let you all know that the session content for this course is now available for purchase. There's a link to download this in the video description below. The session content contains three versions of the project. There's one where the vocals haven't been comped yet, so you can use this for part 15 to practice comping and editing. There's a second version where the vocals have been comped, but haven't been tuned yet. You can use this for parts 16 and 17 to practice vocal tuning and flex time corrections. And then there's a third version that's fully comped and tuned. You can use this for parts 18 through 21 to practice mixing and mastering. When I made this course, I did it in Logic 10.4.3, so make sure to upgrade to this version or higher if you want to guarantee that the project files work correctly. Thank you in advance if you purchase this. It really helps me out and helps keep the channel running. Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 18 of my Logic Pro 10 201 course. In this video, I'm going to mix the vocals with EQ compression and some time-based effects. However, the first thing I want to do is I want to pull the level of all of the instrumental uh, down in the mix. Um, when we were editing the vocals, I had a bunch of uh, compressor plugins on the vocal tracks just to bring them out, uh, but I've pulled that all off and the vocals are pretty low even at full volume. Um, I also don't want my master output to uh, clip or my stereo output to clip. Um, and to, throughout the course, I've, I've put this limiter on here just to keep it from clipping. Um, that was just um, something I did as a precaution to make sure that the screen capture didn't uh, clip. So what I'm gonna do is select all of my tracks here, and I'm just gonna pull them all down just a bit. Now we can do this because I didn't add any um, track-based automation for volume. Almost, I pretty much think almost all of the automation we've been adding in is region-based automation, and I don't believe we added any track-based volume automation in, because um, I typically reserve automation for the end, but we had some special effects that we, we wanted to create earlier, so. All right, so I'm gonna start with the verse vocals. They sound like this right now. They're really dry, they don't really come out in the mix at all. Um, some points come out more than others, so we need to level out the dynamics uh, quite a bit. So what I'm going to do in the main vocal is I'm going to use the scissors tool and I'm going to cut out any sort of unnecessary long gaps between the phrases because there is some headphone bleed in there that I want to avoid. Now, I don't want to get into the habit of cutting out every single breath in her vocal. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear? I've done that before with other songs, but here it just it's just not going to sound natural. So, really what I'm going to do is just going to pull out the areas that are like longer gaps like this. Yeah, like here's a perfect example. Death with no freedom, hearts with no heroes. Baby, it's just you and me. And then off screen, I did the same thing to the second verse. There's far less gaps in the second verse, but I just pulled out all of the longer uh, gaps just to get rid of that headphone bleed. And then off screen, I did the same thing for the chorus vocals as well. Again, I'm not doing it with the harmonies because we already trimmed up the harmonies earlier. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to drag over all of these that we cut, and I'm going to add a quick fade in and a quick fade out using the region parameters over here. And that'll just keep any pops or clicks or anything like that from happening at the endpoints of the regions. Okay, so we're ready to add some EQ and compression. Let's start with the verse vocal here. I'll just loop this one area. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world, a broken world alone. So I'm going to add a bit of a sibilance boost with the high shelf here. I always like to boost uh, a little narrow little bump, usually or somewhere between 1 and 2K for vocals, just to sort of, sort of like a presence peak. So I'll pull that up to around 2K. And then... Her voice is pretty bright, so there's not going to be a whole lot of low end in it. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. So I pulled out all the low end uh, with this high pass filter. And then just to give her bottom end 
some body, I'm going to pull up a band just below where her fundamental frequency is. I don't like to pull it up directly on the fundamental because it tends to uh, resonate a bit. And so what I do is I, I'll usually put the um, the emphasis, like a low emphasis, just below the fundamental. And then this 500 hertz range, it's a bit uh, boxy. Um, and actually, I just used both of my bands here. Let's use this one to pull down the 500 range a bit. There we go. And we'll use this band to boost. There we go. Let's try that out. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world alone. Yeah, it's a bit boxy and flat before. It's a bit brighter now. You have to be careful about how much of a sibilance boost you add as well because it can really bring out the S's in her voice, uh, which I don't want to bring out too much of. And I don't want to use a de -er on her voice either. So I'm going to try to bring it out just enough where it brings out the sibilance and brings out the presence in the high end, but not so much that I need to add a de -er. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world alone. All right, so let's listen to that with the music. I'll just mute the harmony for now. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world alone. Cool, so that's helping a lot. Let's add compression next. I'm probably going to have to use two compressors on her voice because her dynamics are all over the place. Um... So I'm going to start with the Vintage Opto. Remember, this is an optical circuit, so this is pretty much the closest thing to an LA-2A you're going to get in Logic without using third-party plugins. And typically, when I'm in the studio, um, what I'll do is I'll use an LA-2A while tracking to level out the dynamics, but then I'll use another compressor later in mixing to level it out some more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the Opto handle most of the work, the heavy compression, and then I'm going to add a second compressor after it just to sort of tame down some of the peaks. So I don't want the auto gain feature on, so I'll turn that off. I will manually adjust my makeup gain here. And let's give this a listen. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world. So between the threshold and the ratio, this is essentially the amount of compression taking place. As you pull down the signal and you level out the dynamics in the signal, it makes the overall track quieter. So then you have to go back and add makeup gain to push it back up to a level that's loud enough to hear over the rest of the mix. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Now with vocals, um, the attack time is very important. If you pull this all the way down, to zero, pretty much none of the front end transients of words will come through and it's gonna sound very um, squashed and like you're not gonna be able to make out um, the words as well. But you also don't wanna pull this up too much because it'll take too long for the compressor to kick in. So you kinda of have to find a sweet spot somewhere in this area um, to let the front end transient of the words through. Tell me that you see it, can you feel it, can you hear it? Call your name, it's a broken world, a broken world alone. Tell, tell me that you see it, can you feel it, can you hear it? Call your name, it's a broken world, a broken world alone. Tell me that you see it. Can if you have a uh, lower input level too, you can try pulling up the input gain a bit. Like if you have a recording that's a little bit too quiet, you can pull up the input gain first because uh, one big mistake a lot of people make is their recordings are maybe too quiet and they try to compress it and the compressor is barely reacting to the input signal because the input signal is not loud enough. So I'm going to pull this up uh, one and a half dB just to give it a little bit more uh, of a boost so that the compressor reacts a little bit harder to it. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name, it's a broken world, a broken world alone. Tell me that you see it, can you feel it, can you hear it? Call your name, it's a broken world, a broken world alone. 
I'm also going to add in the hard distortion unit. The soft one's a little bit too... It's funny because the hard, the soft one is actually the most noticeable one. Um, the hard one's a, a bit softer. <laughs> it seems odd, but that it's just the type of distortion, not necessarily the, the audible sound of it. So I'm going to go with the hard distortion. You can also choose to blend uh, the original with the compressed signal. I'm not going to do that on this stage. I may do that on the next stage, though. So let's give that a listen with everything in. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world alone. We got kids with no shelter. Lies from my leaders. Pain from the sky to the sea. Death with no freedom. Hearts with no heroes. Baby. Notice that the S's are kind of out of control now, so we can probably tame down this sibilance boost a bit. Using the opto compressor will just, just using it alone without EQ will accentuate the S's and the SH sounds. Tell me that you see it, can you feel it, can you hear it, call your name, it's a broken world. Cool, so I'm gonna add a second compressor to this. I normally don't do this with Logix compressors, but um, typically what I'll use is, if I use third-party plugins, is I'll use the uh, Native Instruments LA-2A model, and then I'll use the Arvox plugin from Waves as a second very gentle uh, compressor. So that's essentially kind of the same thing I'm doing here. The first compressor is like my LA-2A, and the second is gonna be like my Arvox, uh, just with some very, very gentle compression. For this, I'm going to try the Studio VCA. I'll jump around and audition the different um, circuits, but I'm pretty sure this is the one I want to use. So turn auto gain off once again. Um, very, very um, low ratio, two or three to one. Very soft threshold. Um, I just want to level out some of the upper uh, peaks in her voice. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you? shelter lies from my leaders pain from the sky to the sea Let's just A, B this real quick. So here is before again. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a and then after with the EQ and compression. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world. Cool, so let's add this to the harmony as well. So I'm just gonna duplicate these over. I'm not gonna use the second compressor on the harmony. And then in the harmony um, track, I'm gonna take out the upper shelf. I'm gonna take out the presence boost. I'm going to take out the low end boost. And then I'm gonna add a low pass filter and scoop out quite a bit of the high end. Um, again, I don't want the harmonies to be super noticeable in the mix. I just want them to be something that helps layer the vocals. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. And I've already got the harmony panned over to the right a bit as well. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Now, because the harmony is essentially emphasizing harmony at the more melodic points of the words, not the consonant points in, in the words. I'm gonna pull down the attack time on the harmony so that the front end of words don't come through as strong, but just on the harmonies, not in the in the lead vocal. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world alone. We got kids with no shelter. Lies from my leaders. Pain from the sky to the sea. Death with no freedom.
from hearts with no heroes. Baby, it's just you and me. So next up is time-based effects. I want to add some uh, modulation effects to thicken the voice, and I also want to add some reverb. I've always had a hard time finding um, good chorus and ensemble effects. Um, there's very few of them that I like, but one of the effects I like to use is a tape delay um, ensemble style effect. So um, what I'm going to do is on both of these vocals, I'm going to send these over to one of my available buses. So use bus three here and option click on the send amount to pull it all the way up to 100%. And all the way over on the right side of the mixer, you'll see that aux track. It's automatically created for us as bus three. I'm going to make sure to make the input on this stereo, though. And what I'm going to do is right click and choose create track. What this will do is it'll create a track for the aux track up in the up in the arrange area up here. But what it, this also does is it puts the aux track wherever you place it up in the arrange area. It places it in the same place down in the mixer. Um, so I'm just going to call this uh, tape delay, but it's not really going to be like a delay in like a traditional sense. It's going to be more of like an ensemble effect. So I'm just going to solo that out. I'll solo out my verse vocal. I'll mute the, the harmony though. And I'm going to add a plugin under delay called tape delay. I'm going to start with a preset called 16th note slap. It's a, like a slap back delay effect. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's so, so you can see this is tempo synced to a 16th note. But if I uncheck this, it'll show you what this is in milliseconds. So I can pull this amount down until it's just barely past the dry signal. And it'll create a bit of a, uh, a thickening ensemble effect. Tell me Tell that me you that see it. it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world, a broken world alone. So that that by itself is pretty cool. Um, you can also choose to filter the delayed signal if you like. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a Typically, you don't want the delay to be the full frequency range because then it just starts to sound like an echo. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a so I usually cut out a, a, quite a bit of the low end and the high end just for that. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? There's also this great uh, spreading effect in here, too. Um, you don't want to use it too much because it'll cause some weird phase cancellation issues um, it, when you're in mono. So typically what I'll do is I'll throw the gain plug in on my master out and I'll put this in mono and I'll play with the spread. And you're not going to hear a spread because we're in mono. This plugin's making the whole mix mono. But put it in an area where it doesn't sound like there's a lot of uh, phase cancellation. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can like there, I'm really only hearing the dry signal. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? There, I'm actually hearing the tape delay. So this is probably a safe point where it's not going to uh, cancel itself. The effect isn't going to cancel itself out in mono. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world. There's also two tape head modes. There's clean and diffuse. Diffuse seems to be a bit more open. Clean's a bit more, um, it's a bit more tight sounding. So I'm going to use the diffuse mode. And there's also uh, an LFO uh, down here for modulation. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world alone. What this does is it uh, emulates a uh, tape flutter. Um, if you pull this way up and you pull the flutter intensity up, you'll hear sort of like a wobble or a wow in your uh, in your signal. We don't want too much of it, but a little bit um, is nice. Now also note that for uh, time-based effects, you always want the dry signal to be zero because we're putting it on uh, an effects bus uh, using an effects send. So the dry signal is already there on the original track. We have just the wet signal here on the tape delay track. I'm not going to put this at 100% because this plugin can get pretty loud. 
and you can also adjust the feedback as well. It's the the amount of delay that you're getting or how long the delay lasts. Traditionally, it affects how long the delay lasts for. But since we have such a short delay, we don't need a feedback level that's that's high. It's just going to sound uh, weird and like it's going to give it sort of like a tunnel effect. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's so that doesn't need to be up very high. So let's give this a listen with all of the music in. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world alone. Let's give the second verse a listen. It's just a tragedy. Cool, so it's uh, been thickened up quite a bit. And lastly, let's add reverb to her voice. So I'll do the same thing, create a new bus, go to bus four. Option click on these to set their uh, send amount up to 100%. I'll right click on the aux track it's created and choose create new track. We'll put this up near the vocals, on top of the vocals. And this will be our vocal reverb track. I'm gonna make this stereo as well. And I'm gonna use the chroma verb for this. And let me just bounce around between some of these different presets and see what they sound like. It's just a Now, obviously, I don't want that much reverb, um, but I like the tone of that one. And actually, what I'll do first is I'll pull down the send amount a bit. And then I'll pull down the reverb amount, the total reverb on the aux track. It's just a tragedy. So I like that, but I want it to be a bit smaller and also a bit more diffuse. So I'm gonna pull down the size a bit, pull down the decay a bit, and then under the details button here, I'm going to also pull up the width. I'm gonna create some sp stereo spread there. And I'm also going to turn on this mono maker. What this does is it makes the reverb mono below a certain point. So I don't want the low end to have this stereo spread. I don't only want the high end to have the stereo spread. So I'll set this around 500 hertz. And let's give this a listen. It's just a tragedy. Kids with no future. You can also play with the early to late reflections ratio. At 50 50, you hear the same amount of both. If you pull this up, you hear more late reflections. If you pull this down, you hear more early reflections. It's just a tragedy. You want it all, but you can't break free. You're losing time. So the early reflections sound like more of like a room reflection off of walls that are close to her. And then when you put this on late reflections, it sounds like more like a hall sort of reverb because of the, it's reflecting off of surfaces further away and reflecting off of surfaces multiple times. So to make this sound more diffuse, I'm going to pull this up into the late range a bit more. It's just a tragedy. You want it all, but you can't break free. You're losing time when you're wasting lives. Your karma's on the line. I'm also going to pull the pre-delay down. It's at 8 milliseconds. I'm going to put it at 4 milliseconds. This will make the room sound a little bit smaller as well. It's just a tragedy. You want it all, but you can't break free. You lose it.
All right, next let's do some work on the choruses. I'm essentially going to copy the same EQ and compressors over to the main, comp uh, the main chorus vocals. And these are hard panned left and right. So let's just pull all that over. Let's mute all the other ones for now. Let's just listen to those. I'll just go ahead and add the same effect sends, bus three and bus four to all of the chorus channels. Pull down the reverb a touch. And for these ones, I'll just mute these for now. But let's give this a listen um, now with the EQ and compression and the time base effects. Please tell me So you hear when she says the like T and S sounds, the reverb is, you're really hearing the reverb at that, those points. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tame down the high end of the actual reverb here, and then I'm going to pull back this upper filter here, this low pass filter a bit so that the, cause I don't wanna hear those echoing T and S effects in the reverb. So now the reverb's more of like a warm mid-range ambience, not a high-end ambience. Okay, so for the artificial harmonies, I'm gonna copy over the same setting from the artificial harmonies from the verse. So it was uh, just this one right here. And I'll pull those buses in. Let's give that a listen. Please tell me how when all the world is lost, we're losing ground. And then for all of the other backing harmonies, the ones that she actually sang, I'm gonna copy over the lead setting, but I'm gonna change one one thing real quick. On the first compressor, I'm gonna pull the attack down a bit. And I'm also going to pull down the high frequency boost here. Really, I'm gonna pull all the boosts down and make it less uh, dramatic for these backing vocals because the high end frequencies and those resonances can build up and then they can uh, like uh, sort of over resonate and you just hear a lot of S's because you've got six tracks singing an S, a sibilant sound all at the same time. So then what I'll do is I'll just copy all of these over to all these other channels. I'll unmute all of these, pull in their effects sends, pull their volume up a bit, and uh, let's give this a playthrough and I'll uh, play around with the levels. Please tell me how when all the world is lost, we're losing ground. There's no So I'm starting to feel like this reverb is too small. Let me try pulling the decay time out a bit. Please tell me how when all the world is
cool. I like that better. It's sort of like a long, warm reverb. I think this will sound good on the verses as well. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world alone. All right. So I didn't want to use a de um, but I have to do something about the sibilance. Um, especially in this middle phrase in the chorus, there's a lot of spots where the S's and T's are coming through and they're oversaturated. They almost sound like a punch of a white noise every single time she says an S or a T. And it's partly because of all of the backing vocals that have been stacked up. There's no way out. There's no way back to salvation. Every single time she says an S, it's just... It's like it's almost like someone pressed a button to turn on white noise. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to use the de-esser in Logic. I don't like the de-esser in Logic at all. Um, most of the time, it makes the audio sound worse. So I'm a big fan of the Waves de-esser or the Isotope Nectar de-esser, so go check those out. But if you want to stick with all stock plugins, try putting all of the vocals in a summing stack and then process all the vocals in the summing stack with the Multipressor plugin and just compress the high frequency band. And this will, you can set it to just quickly duck down the high, uh, the high range. So what I'll do is I'll pull down the compression uh, threshold here a bit, and then I'll make the attack time zero, and I'll make the release time uh, quicker than the stock setting. So this makes it a fast acting compressor just on the high range. There's no way out, there's no to salvation we're losing ground there's no way out there's no way back to salvation we're losing ground so you can see that blue bar coming down on just the high frequencies and you can make this a wider range if you want there's no way out there's no way back to salvation we're losing ground you just have to be careful about how much you use it because you can destroy the uh, the air in her voice all right so let's give this a listen with everything in starting at the verse tell me that you see it can you feel it can you hear it call your name it's a broken No shelter, lies from my leaders, pain from the sky to the sea. Death with no freedom, hearts with no heroes, baby, it's just you and me. Please tell me how, when all the world is lost, we're losing ground. So the second verse and the chorus are pretty strong. There's some little slight things I'm going to do with automation uh, later on. But there's a couple things in the first verse that I just, I can't get over. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world alone. 
in the first phrase, because this section is so exposed, um, those breaths are really getting to me. I know I said I, was, I wasn't going to cut them out, but I'm going to cut them out. Um, sometimes if you cut the breaths out, it can make it make the vocal sound unnatural. But in this case, the breaths are just distracting. So let's try that. And I'll go ahead and add a quick fade in and fade out to these, just like I did before. There we go. Let's give that a listen. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world. A broken world alone. On this last one, I think I maybe cut it out a little too. You can see there's, oh, I see the D in world. Yeah, so you need that there. Let's try making the fades longer. In the second phrase, there's some just rhythmic things that are really um, getting on my nerves. We got kids with no shelter, lies from our leaders, pain from the sky to the sea. Death with no freedom, hearts with no heroes, baby, it's just you and me. This last phrase is okay, but this phrase, the timing is just all off. We got kids with no shelter. I tried to fix it with flex pitch, but the rhythms just aren't right. So let me try just nudging this back and see if that does anything. We got kids with no shelter, lies from my leaders, pain from the sky to the sea. So off screen, uh, what I did was I went in and I just effect, affected these couple lines with flex time to fix their timing. Um, you can actually do this by clicking on a region, going over to the region inspector and turning on or off this flex and follow feature. So for all of the clips in the verse that were rhythmically fine, I left it off, but for these uh, four regions here that weren't, I turned it on. And I also cut out some uh, more of the annoying breaths. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to do a lot of that, but there's just some spots where the breath is just distracting, so I pulled it out anyway. So overall, this sounds a lot better. There's one little issue um, over here that we're going to address as well. We got kids with no shelter, lies from our leaders, pain from the sky to the sea. So this phrase right here, man, it just, it sounds like she was like trying to eat her tongue while she was singing. Um, the good news is I can steal some words from this take and put it over here. Death with no freedom, hearts with no heroes. On the with, with no, it's just, there's so much just consonant mouth sound in there. Um, it's just not going to work. So what I'm going to do is get rid of these markers here with the eraser tool. And I'm going to use my marquee tool. I'm just going to grab the first two beats of this area. Hit Command C to copy. And I'm going to use the drag no overlap function and paste that in. Now, the words, not all the words are the same. Hearts with no freedom. Heart so I'm going to turn off my snap. And I'm going to find a good edit point to punch in the with no area. Death with no free. 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 Death with no freedom. Death with no freedom. Death with no freedom. Death with no freedom. It's still a little weird sounding, but it's better than it was before. Add a bit of a crossfade on both of these. Death with no freedom, death with no freedom, death with no freedom. Let me just use the scissors tool to get rid of this breath here. Let's just add a quick fade, hit J to join all this together. Death with no freedom, death with no freedom. Still sounds a little weird. Let's try reducing the... Uh, vowel sound, which is on the left, versus the consonant sound here. 
Death with no freedom, 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 death with no freedom. It's not perfect, but I think that'll do a lot better than it did before. Let's give that whole passage uh, another listen. We are kids with no shelter, lies from our leaders, paint from the sky to the sea. Death with no freedom, hearts with no heroes, baby it's just you and me. Please tell me how to live my life. Cool, so uh, we've got the vocals mostly mixed. There's some things I still want to do with automation later, but I'll save that uh, for the end. In the next few videos, we'll go through and make our final revisions to the instrumental. There's a few things in the instrumental I need to fix. There's a few things I need to uh, change in the mix for the instrumental. And then uh, we'll wrap up with mixing, and then we'll move on to mastering. So just a reminder that you can purchase the session content for this course via the link in the video description below. If you'd like to work along with the last seven tutorials in this course, or you can just use it to practice mixing. As always, you can check me out on social media at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you'd like to make a monthly donation to the channel, you can check me out on Patreon as well. Thanks for the support, and thanks for watching.